Well, good morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, Pastor Doug's on vacation, so I get to lead us in worship. This first song, our call to worship, if you've been listening to 88.1, you've been hearing this on the radio because they've been playing it a lot. It's called Soul on Fire. being gone this week uh, I have the opportunity to lead us in worship and I don't get to do that very often but it's really fun to do that and uh, we're gonna do a song that's a, a hymn as a call to worship it's called holy 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 most of you know this song but I just want to tell you a little something when I uh, every other Monday I go to Ashley Manor in Jerome and I lead worship there with the residents and there's about 15 of them and they have different uh, stages of dementia and so one of the really cool things is breaking out hymns and watching their lips move and they start singing. And I can't help but think that, you know, all during the week they're, you know, just there and themselves. And but when I come and lead them, they're singing praise to God again, you know. And so for us, we get the joy and the privilege of doing that every Sunday here. So stand together. And let's sing this song, Holy, 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 as we recognize God is a holy God on high, and He is welcoming us into His presence to worship Him. Oh, 
indeed God is glad that you're here, that you've carved out some space to come and to a community of fellowship here that's definitely bold and wanting to sing praise to our God. And so if you're here as a guest, welcome. We're glad that you're here and we hope you will experience God in a very fresh way today, whether it be through the reading of scripture or the music or even the prayers that are prayed, that God is about touching and connecting with people. Let's pray. Father, you definitely are holy. You're the God of glory. And yet you're the God of grace. We haven't done anything to earn it or deserve coming into your presence here this morning. But because of your love for us, you're so excited we're here. You are alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are holy, holy, and holy. And so spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, we bow down before you and sing holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, take a moment, walk around, greet one another in the Lord this morning. When heaven is filled with his praises, one day when sin was black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my sample is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, glory revealed.
This next song is uh, another song I love to sing at the manor called Made to Worship. Because really that's what we are. God has created us to love us. He created us to be in a relationship with him and where he takes the initiative. And so you are made to worship and you've done it all week long. And now we've come together to do it corporately. Made to worship. Before the day, before the light, before the world revolved around the sun, God on high stepped down into time, wrote the story of His love for everyone. He has filled our hearts with wonder, so that we always remember you and I are made to worship, you and I are called to love, you and I are forgiven and free. You and I embrace surrender, you and I choose to believe, you and I will see who we're meant to be. Chapin will come up and lead us for a prayer of the people. Pretty nice, huh? We've had a lot of good rain this spring and got to spend some time up in the mountains Friday with Mike. Up, boy, beautiful up there. If you get a chance today, go out and look around. God has put wonders in front of us you can't believe. Uh, some praises. I see Jake somewhere. There he is. He's uh, come to church today, and he's doing pretty good from what I understand. He's got a pretty good attitude. Right, Bill? Susie? <laughs> okay. We're glad to see you, Jake. Uh, and he enjoys uh, visits and stuff, but I suppose there's times he gets tired of it. But uh, Jody, Judy Kopenberger's uh, bro brother, Bob, his survey went real well. And we just want to keep him in prayer. It'll be a couple weeks before he's up and going pretty good. So that's some praises for us. Uh, some prayers for us. Uh, Brooke Martin's grandmother is diagnosed with cancer. And I talked to Brooke a little bit ago. And, and she's 91 years old. And she, 
she knows the Lord and she's she's ready and we just uh, ask prayers for her for uh, going through this transition in her life Kim DeMello's mother Georgia she begins chemo treatments uh, this week and we just pray that cancer doesn't spread and uh, we pray that God's presence is felt here. Brenda Foster, along with Jake, you know, ATVs, motorcycles, horses. I seen a guy in a boat run into his own pickup last weekend. He docked it a little bit too fast, went right up on the beach and took out the whole side of his pickup. So even boats. So be careful, Gary. But Brenda's doing good. She uh, broke a rib and uh, hurt her ankle and her knee. She's swollen up from the knee on down, right, Rick? So we want prayers for her. And uh, just a prayer for all the rain and stuff they're having in Texas right now. Two years ago, they was in a drought situation and they was having to buy hay from even up here. Now they, I don't know what kind of crop they'll have because they got so much, under, everything's underwater down there. So prayer for that, so. We'll pray, and then at the end of my prayer, I'm going to go into the Lord's Supper, and we'll make the Lord's Supper will be our last prayer. So, uh, you bear with me here. Okay, Father God, you uh, just your outside, your all your creation is just a wonder to me. Uh, those of us that spend a lot of time out out of doors, it's just every day we see your work. Uh, we just pray for Brooke Martin's grandmother that you'd be with her, comfort her, comfort Brooke and, and, and his family. Just, uh, you know, it's, it's sad to lose a grandmother, but just comfort them in, in this, this whole thing. We pray for Kim DeMello's mother, Georgia, that the treatments go well, and that your hand is on her shoulder as she does this. Just keep her safe and calm. Pray for Brenda that she heals fast. She's got an interview tomorrow she's going to try to make. Uh, but just uh, put your healing touch on Brenda and uh, help her through this. We pray for the people in Texas. It's just a, been quite a devastating thing down there. Uh, people have lost a lot of homes and, and a lot of lives already so far. And we just ask you to be with those people in Texas. They are going through a really troubling time. We ask uh, prayers for our church and its leaders. We, uh, you, you furnished, us, uh, furnished us such a beautiful place to worship you. We ask uh, prayers for the leaders that they direct this church under your guidance. We ask prayers for Gary's sermon this morning. Uh, I know that the this marriage thing that Gary's in right now it, it fits some people real good and other people it probably don't but that's just what sermons do so just be with Gary on his last of this series we, we uh, pray for government leaders uh, that they do the Christian thing and that we continue to get some people in our government that that are Christians and that are working for God and just not their self. We've got people in the military all around the uh, world. We just ask you special blessings on them, keep them safe, keep them out of harm's way. And most of all, God, we just pray for forgiveness of our sins. And uh, we thank you for all the things you put in front of us. We ask you this week to put those people in front of us that we can help out whether it be just listening to them or, uh, or doing something good for them. And now we'll go to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thee in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
for our offertory song. We're going to do a throwback to the 1990s. This is a song that you probably never heard. It was a song sung in a church that uh, one of the authors put together. And it's with our theme being uh, Song of Solomon. And our final one today is called All About Love. Let's have some fun with it. I want to be, I want to be like you. In every day, or the way that you want me to. It's getting better, I read your letter. These are the words you said to me. Love the Lord with all your heart. June 16th, we have our uh, congregational meeting for to go over our financial budget. So just keep that in mind. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all these gifts and offerings. We know that you have given us our talents to help, help glorify your kingdom here. And we ask that you continue to keep blessing us. Open our hearts. Walk with us. Guide us. And even though we may stray, we ask that you, we ask that you we all, we turn to you and look at you, and ask for your guidance again. Thank you for everything that you have blessed this church with, and we ask for continual guidance in your offerings. In your name, we pray. Amen. In fact, with uh, what Chris said about uh, the congregational meeting, it's a great night to come together. You will as. Uh, ministry teams and as well as uh, folks who are partnering with us in ministry here at New Life, the consistory will be finalizing that plan um, next week or a couple weeks from now. 
and you'll get that in the mail if you're a professing member here at New Life and come out as an opportunity to discuss it and to uh, vote on that together. As we press in on the blessings God has given us this past year as well as what we anticipate he's going to be doing for the next year. You know, as you look around, you see some new faces and I'm just excited to see you guys here, all of you, you know, and uh, seeking out God and, and watching how he's at work in your life. You know, one of the folks that have been coming is Patrick Huggins, and he said, what's happening for men's group? And, and I said, well, over the summer, we generally don't have a lot going on. There's a Monday night study over at Chuck Chapin's place. And he says, you know, I've always wanted to do a men's breakfast. I came out of Fresno, and the way we had them there. How about we do one? So in your program, you're going to see Brian Gailey, and uh, Patrick said, let's try it. Let's do it. And we got some great material uh, from a football coach and a quarterback, and so he's gonna be bringing, we're gonna start off talking about Moses. So uh, check out in your program. So girls, ladies, we encourage you to spur your men and get over there and uh, take some time out and come and join us for that. You see also the youth yard sale is coming up. It's a great opportunity to uh, bring your stuff and uh, let the students run through it and price it and get ready to, to sell it to help in support of uh, our missions trip. So we're concluding the Song of Solomon today as we wrap up this book. What an adventure it has been from this Shulamite who was, you know, a country living girl that we could identify with who's out tending to the vineyards. Uh, and why is she doing that? Because we don't know a lot about her father, but we don't hear about it. Instead, we hear about her brothers. Her, her brother said, we need you to work out in the fields. And she said, okay, and she did. And she says later, you know, that look, look at my skin, I'm burnt, I'm dark. And, you know, just she's seen that as a, a negative, that she was a hardworking woman. Well, we value hard work around here in Idaho, don't we? As men and, and as women. But in that culture at that time, it, it wasn't seen as attractive. And so here comes uh, Solomon, and he sees this woman out there working in the vineyards, and ah, he takes notice. And so we've watched this couple walk all the way through from attraction, right, where we focused in on character and spirituality are more important than looks. You know, your society won't tell you that. That's why they sell you all that stuff, to make you look good. But if you got bad character, there ain't no amount of anything you're going to put on that's going to make it good, Okay. So that's what we talked about, attraction, and then courting. And we attended a wedding. We seen physical intimacy, and then we saw a fight and how to do that well and not respond uh, in a way that we're reacting to the little things that irritate us or the big things. But instead, Jesus says, look past your mate in those moments of conflict and see me because I'm standing right behind him. I want you to love them in conflict the way you love me and forgive them, okay? And focus in on loving me and expressing that love to your mate. But today we're, we're turning the page to a, a lifetime of romance. And uh, as you open your Bibles to Song of Solomon, chapter 8, page 673, I got a number of emails on this series and it's been fun chatting with you and stuff, but I, I want to read one for you that I got here. Just a sample, but it says this. I have to tell you, the timing of this series has been very challenging for me. The weekend it started is the weekend that my boyfriend broke things off. As you spoke today about having that safe place to fall with your mate, I held back tears. As we sang a few of the songs, I cried. Knowing and trusting in God's process is freeing me more every day and bringing joy into my life, as well as allowing me to feel more. A blessing and a struggle to feel real feelings. I was tempted to skip this morning in the name of being tired, but knowing that just the urge to resist was the scream I needed to show up. Wow, is that a powerful email? I mean, as we sit here and unpack God's word, God is at work through us, around us, and among us. And so this theme today, a lifetime of romance, you know, I, 
I look around in our world today, in our society, and, and you have too. There, you've probably been to weddings where you've seen the couple up there and the pastor or the officiant is reading the lines and maybe they have in there, we promise until death do us part, right? And, and you can't help but have a little twinge and think, ah, oh, boy, I hope they make it. Right? I, I mean, in our society today, this thing, a lifetime of romance, it's all intended well and good at that moment. But the reality is, is there's brokenness in our world. There's hurt, there's hangups, there's selfishness. We have pride. There's, there's things that come against us. And so when I do premarital counseling with couples, it's one of the first questions I'll ask them. Is with the statistics today, what makes you think you're going to make it until one of you dies? And they'll have a variety of answers, but Song of Solomon tells us today what that answer is. You can have all the pieces of the puzzle, but if you're missing this piece, it's like an unfinished project. You need this piece that Solomon unpacks for us today. Let's look at the word. Oh, that's right. I wanted to do this quote from Tommy Nelson. He says, marriage is a divine institution. The reason that we're having problems in marriage is that individually we're having problems with God. And I want you to think about that because that's part of what's speaking to what we're going to unpack here today. But if you just look around in our society and people that maybe you know and if you've seen where it's happened or even just challenges in marriage, a lot of times it can boil right down to that is our relationship with Christ. So from friendships to marriage, your relationships will never be all they intended to be without the person of Jesus Christ in your life. That's the missing piece of the puzzle for so many. Love's power to transform. We open up our text today starting with the verse five. And it says, who is this coming from the desert? leaning on her lover and it's the friends they see her and they go who is that love has transformed her like we said at the beginning she was very self-conscious of herself and she is transformed in such a way that people don't even recognize her and I couldn't help but think for ourselves as well God loves you right where you at but he loves you too much to let you stay there his whole purpose is that we conform more to be like his son. We're supposed to look more and more like Jesus all the time and growing and developing to really, truly be a follower of Jesus Christ means that we become his disciples. And there's a huge difference between being a believer and being a disciple. And I think a big chunk of it is right here about allowing God to transform us according to his word. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You want to know what impacts people about the truth of the gospel? It's you and your life. It's not facts. It's not knowledge. It's action. And it's action that comes out of your life where God is at work in conforming or transforming you to be more like Christ in love. It's really like that song said, that's what it's all about. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body and strength and your neighbor as yourself. It all boils down to that. And it transformed the world as the disciples lived that out. There's a quote from Lloyd Ogilvy. He says it this way. The most powerful historical proof of the resurrection is that the resurrected disciples, okay, think about them, dull, defeated people became fearless, adventuresome leaders. Cowards became courageous. The timid became triumphant. The inept did the impossible. He is risen, became the joyous chant of a new life without limits. And so we look back at our text. Who is this coming from the desert leaning on her lover? And you can picture that, this couple, like what you see in the picture I chose for the background. So who do you lean on? Coming out of the desert, coming out of the difficult times, in the difficult times, 
who do you lean on? And, and you may point to your mate, and, and I praise God for that, that you have someone in your life that's that comfortable place to land when you need it. But you know what? That person is a failed human being too. So do not put on that person the needs that only Christ can provide you. Okay? Don't look to another person to fulfill the void in your life that only Jesus Christ can fill. The Song of Solomon reminds us of that when he says, who is this coming up from the desert leaning on her lover? Love's power to transform. Let's go on. The Shulamite says this. Oops, sorry. Under the apple tree I roused you. There your mother conceived you. There she who was in labor gave birth to you. Okay, again, we have this Hebrew poetry. So what is she saying? Well, the, the issue of the apple tree is about love. But when he talks of, she talks about her mother, she's saying, from the time of your conception and birth, not only were you uh, in the plan for me, but God fashioned you for me. God oversaw this whole process and has brought us together and I see you in my life as a gift from God. Love's power to transform. God brought us together as a couple. Then we see, we go into the possessiveness of love. Watch this. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. Now, in that days, a lot of people used seals that represented something on a, a written document. They would place their seal on it. Perhaps you have a family crest in your family. They don't mean as much for us today. But in this time, a Jewish man took great pride in his seal. It represented him. And it's possessive of him. And so this is what she's saying here. She's bringing this out. That you are as precious to me as my seal. And I want that precious thing on my heart. And I want it on my arm. It brings about security. What is she saying? She's saying, look, don't give me your career. Right? Don't, I don't want that. I want to you. Don't shower me just with gifts. I want you. Don't it? I mean, it's very important for us to provide security and things for our homes. But don't do a trade-off. Okay? She needs to know that she is a priority in your life as well. Don't let work rob you of that, that possessiveness of love. Then we go to permanence of love. For love is strong as death. It's jealousy, unyielding as the grave. And here's where we see that. Till death do us part until one of us passes away you know that death is permanent and that's what we're saying here that marriage is is permanent the Bible tells us we're appointed once to die there's no such thing as re a reincarnation it's appointed once today and she says this is it this is the one this is my one time marriage now I'm sorry for some of you who have had a divorce and I know this is this is painful for me to be bringing this out. But it has to be taught. And I'm, I'm sorry. I love you deeply. But we have to bring this out as well as for today. You know, as a, a pastor, I've got to see this in action in so many ways. We're a couple through the years. have gone through so much of life together. They've raised their kids. And then he becomes ill. And I've seen... A gray-haired woman brushing back the hair of a gray-haired man as he lays in his dying bed. There's something pretty noble about that, isn't there? To see that, to watch that, to experience that, that, that permanence of love. She says this, it burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. You know, whenever you see fire in the Bible, it's usually referencing to God. And his divine power and authority. And, and I think we're seeing that here too. She's relating that passion, that fire. And let me just tell you, God's passionate fire for you will never burn out. It will never stop. He will never leave you. He will never, ever forsake you. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's his promise. He will not leave you. You know, Kim DeMello posted on Facebook this week in light of her mother, Georgia, being told she has stage four cancer and it's in her lungs 
It doesn't look good. But Kim, you posted this on Facebook. It blessed me, and I know it blessed a lot of people. I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our wonders about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing at all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ. That's love flame of God set my soul on fire Shulamite goes on and says many waters cannot quench love nor can rivers drown it if a man tried to buy love with all his wealth his offer would be utterly scorned God's love can never be quenched God's plan for love singles this is probably the greatest text in our Bible for when you're ready to get married Fathers, pay attention. How do you know, if you have a daughter, how do you know when that young man comes a-knocking? I want to talk to you about marrying your daughter. How do you know if she's ready for that? Is it an age thing? Well, you know, she's only whatever. Or is it what, what is it? How do you decide? Or you moms with your boys, too? They say, oh my, she's the one. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. I can't wait to spend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her to marry me. How do you know he's ready? How do you know if this is the right time for them in their life? This text tells us. Watch this. We have a young sister, and her breasts are not yet grown. Now, what he's saying there, she's probably about 12, maybe 10, 10, 12, right in there, okay? And he says, they say, what shall we do for our sister for the days she's spoken for? That's the line right there, okay? She's not ready to get married yet, but we know as brothers, we're to watch over her, protect her, and someday some guy's going to come a courting. And how do we know as her brothers that she's going to be ready? That's what they're saying. And somebody comes. How do we know? As fathers, I'm sure you've played this in your mind. If not, you are now. <laughs> right? Well, here's what the, it talks about. Watch this. If she's a wall, if she's a wall, meaning she's able to defend herself, she's set for herself some standards, right? If she's a wall, we'll build towers of silver on her. In other words, if she can stand up to that today and now and make those steps of integrity and spirituality and honesty and God-fear living, in relationship with him and saying like the Shulamite said remember I'm not gonna wear a veil I'm not gonna go hang out by the shepherds guys and wear a veil like the prostitutes I won't stand for that I don't need that God has something better for me that's what it means to set up a wall and guard yourself and guard your emotions guard your body so that you and offer that as a gift to the man or the woman that God would have for you for your lifetime. If she's a wall, we build towers of silver on her. Now watch this. Now if she's a door, you know, she's boyfriend after boyfriend, man. She's got guys coming and going, just in and out of her life. If she's a door, we'll enclose her with pe panels of cedar. It means they're going to board her up and guard her. If she can't do it herself, they're going to take care of business and make sure it happens. And that's a, an encouragement to us as, as men and parents to do just that. If, that. if that's happening, right, we'll put her in a room and we'll nail the door shut. <laughs> because she needs to learn to be godly toward men as a single before she gets married. 
Because it's easy then. Oh, it's not so easy. What are you talking about? Yes, it is easy. Because when you put one of these on your finger, life dramatically changes. Listen, so much is put forth in the weddings today. You need to recognize there's a marriage the next day. Oh, the honeymoon's awesome, but you're going to come and you're going to live with someone who has hurts, habits, and hangups and brokenness in their life. And it's a heavy weight to lift sometimes. It's easy to bail. It's easy to get angry. It's easy to all these other things we've talked about. But if you can't manage your life as a single how are you going to do it when you've got a job, you've got now a wife to care for, you've got to go grocery shopping, you've got to play bare meals, your mom's not doing it for you anymore, you've got to go get uh, insurance on your car, you've got to pay for it, you've got to fix your car yourself, you've got, oh, bring a kid into it, oh my goodness, now we've got a child, we've got to get formula and diapers, and we got, all of a sudden your whole life is just filled with all this other stuff. And if you can't manage when you're a single, God's priorities and principles. I'm telling you, how are you going to do it when you're married? You're going to fail. And do not put this load on our young people today. And I, you need to hear that from me as your pastor. I won't do it. One of the hardest things I've done is look a young couple all excited in the eye and say, I'm not the guy to do this with you. There's other things that are happening I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll look you right in the eye and I'll say, are you sleeping together? Because if you are, then you're not ready to get married. If you cannot manage that in your private life as a single and as a young couple, what makes you think you're going to carry God's provisions and purpose in your life to follow? You know the best thing for a couple, probably the most important day of their lives, it's not the wedding day. It's a great day, but it's not the wedding day. It's when a couple looks each other in the eyes and says, you know what? We need to stop playing around with God. We need to stop playing as Christians. We need to get serious with God and serious with his plan in our life. That is the most important day in any couple's life. God's plan Look what the girl says. In the purity of love, she says, I'm a wall and my breasts are like towers. <laughs> you just got to laugh sometimes. Huh? She points to say, she, I am a wall. And I carry myself with dignity and respect and the honor that I deserve. That's what that line is saying there for us. What are the, the standards of purity that she's lived out for us? Is she's hardworking. She's developed herself on the inside. She's respected. Nobody has touched her. And then watch. She says, I have become in his eyes like one bringing contentment. She applied these things to her life, and that's when she found grace in the eyes of Solomon. You know, there's a proverb that... You may have seen this. I, if you ever get a chance to just read through the Proverbs, there are so many goblets of wisdom there, and most of them are written by Solomon. And one of them is this one right here. Watch this. A beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. <laughs> it's okay to laugh at that. I mean, right? You've seen it. You've seen it, right, where a person is... All dull. I mean, they have spent so much money on the outside and they're all that, right? But their character is flawed and you think, what a waste that is. And their integrity is so flawed. But, oh, they look good. That's what this proverb is saying. How ridiculous it is to put a gold ring in a pig snout. Give me that ring, Right? And so as we think about that and see that, you can put a man's name in there too. It's not just about a woman. No quality, no maturity. And you say, what a, what a waste. That's what God's concerned about. More about your character and your spirituality than about how you look. Listen, there's, uh, for those of you who are single and 
wish you were married, there's only one thing that's worse. That's being married and wishing you were single. That's a painful, painful place to be in. You don't hunt for a husband. You don't, you don't hunt for a wife. Instead, in your relationship with Christ as a disciple you develop your character and you let God take care of the other part because he'll bring you the right person when the time is right let's read on verses 11 and 12 Solomon had a vineyard in Baal Hammon and he let out his vineyard to tenants see this he let out his vineyard to tenants who were the tenants they were the brothers they were the brothers of the Shulamite okay each was to bring for its fruit a thousand shekels of silver. But my own vineyard, now the Shulamite's talking about what? Her body. My own vineyard is mine to give. And watch this. The thousand shekels are for you, O Solomon, and two hundred are for those who tend to its fruit. What is she saying? I mean, this sounds kind of weird. Especially the way I impacted with the tenants are her brothers. When your daughter or your son makes God choice priorities in their life, honoring and glorifying Him, isn't it a reward to you? I mean, don't you love to see that? Isn't it encouraging to you? So listen, parents. I hope you get this because I know as you lay down rules for your kids and you say curfews at 1030 or 1130 or whatever you say, they're going to push back on you. I have yet to see a kid say, hey, thanks, mom, but you know what? I'm coming in 15 minutes earlier than that. They don't do that. They push the envelope. And so some of you kids are going to start getting mad at me right here. But you know what, parents? Thank you for doing that. Thank you for standing in the way sometimes and helping guide them and lead them to make healthy choices in their life. They're not always going to like it. At least not at the moment. But later, they'll reap a harvest of God's blessings and you will see that and be celebrating right along with them. Verses 13 and 14, the pleasure of love. You who dwell in the gardens with friends and attendants, let me hear your voice. You who dwell in the gardens with friends. I want you to think about this. See, it's like he's at work. Okay, he's at work with his friends, but he's at work and he longs to hear the Shulamite's voice. Guys, this week, leave your spouse a note. Text them during the week and just say, you know what? I'm at work, but I'm thinking of you. And I can't wait to hear your voice. I'm telling you, it will impact. It will. It will make a difference. They'll love it. Just let them know that you're thinking about them and that you care about them. And what, ladies, what should you say? Watch this, the very last verse of our text. Come away my lover, and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the spice-laden mountains. Amen. Boy, God's plan for love. There's nothing like it. And definitely not from our world. Fresh beginnings are always possible as we wrap up this series. You know, we've we've looked through this series, and, and Solomon, you know, he was the wisest man that ever lived. Some of you remind me, yeah, but he failed. And he failed miserably. He was so, so wise. And so maybe in some way we have to remember that his life teaches us that even wise people make foolish choices. Solomon's heart was led away from God by other women, other women who served other gods. And he made foolish choices and he allowed that to happen. His, his love life began to crumble. His kingdom began to crumble. His very life began to crumble. And no incredible wisdom that he had was going to prevent it because of the choices that he made. You know, the truth is that no marriage, no matter how great it might be, 
You can say, man, we have the best marriage. It will not bring satisfaction into every area of your life. God's designed you that way. He's the one who's going to bring that. God needs to be the center of your life. And if it's not, it's like a puzzle with a missing piece. And it's incomplete. But with God as that cornerstone of your life and in your marriage, that puzzle is complete. He's the one who gives us wisdom and the right words for the right time. He's the one that gives us that that motivation to confess with each other, to forgive one another. He's the example of love and sacrifice to hold up. Watch this, what Paul says in Ephesians. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. For we're God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us so long ago. New life. If that's something you need in your life, maybe your relationship with God has been waiting. There's a fresh beginnings are always possible. Maybe you've never really trusted Jesus. I have a little prayer there for you in your outline. Take time to read through that and see if that might express your heart. For those of you that want to dig a little bit deeper on this with theology, I've left you a few uh, notes at the end of your outline as well of how God has arranged for us to know him through Jesus Christ. Next week, we begin a new series, and I know there's a lot of stuff going on. Nick Southfield's getting married in Boise, and a number of you are going to be gone and going to that. But the rest of you are still meeting here, and we're going to start a new series on what's your next step. Because if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he wants you to be his disciple. And what does that look like today? Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for lives that are are being affected by it. In it, we rejoice. Not that it's been easy, because applying your word, we can't do it on ourselves and by ourselves. We need your help. And so, Holy Spirit, would you just strengthen us, minister to our hearts, minister to our souls. Father, we desire to walk in step with you and so lord as we make those steps by faith as you lead us and guide us we trust lord that you will provide the power that we need amen so we're going to sing this song soul on fire it was our call to worship song and uh, i'm going to invite you to stand up together as we sing this song and join in as you feel comfortable. Thank you for carving out time in your day. You had a lot of things that you could have done today, but you chose to be here. And uh, I want to encourage you to keep coming back because God's ways work. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire.
Let me return to you Go in the power and the presence of Almighty God. Amen.